So I'm curious, I mean, let's just be honest. How strong a sustainability story do we have for the beef and corn industries? Um, you want to start with the corn industry? I think it's extremely strong. In, in general, uh, you know, again, we continuously try to improve. And, uh, and that's just one thing that, that farmers with their own businesses inherently do. And any other business you're going to run, um, you're trying to create efficiencies and trying to, you know, make sure you're taking that extra step. Uh, I think, uh, you know, right now farmers are, are doing a lot of different things with cover crops, okay. uh, no-till. Yeah. Um, again, we're looking at uh, different technologies within, uh, you know, within the equipment that uh, all helps us become more efficient. Um, lots of different things that just continue to stack up, and you know, every year it's something something different that uh, I think we're you know we're able to add uh, to the toolbox to make sure that you know we continually are improving uh, the sustain sustainability of the corn grower. And how about the beef industry? What, what does our sustainability story look like, Dr. Erickson? Well, Kevin, I'm super excited because I think that for years we've probably been a little anxious about this issue and the beef side and, and probably taken some, maybe at times too much heat on this issue. And they, there's a tremendous amount of excitement because I think we have some really good news to share in that regard. And every, every cattle producer in the country should be aware of those statistics and be able to, do, to address this issue and not be afraid of it. First and foremost, produce 18% of the world's beef with 8% of the cattle in the world. Incredible. And when I talk about that relative to other countries, I think that's the perfect amount of evidence that we are the most efficient and therefore the most sustainable system in the world if you're going to consume beef, which hopefully everybody does. Secondly, when we talk about uh, specifically the synergy between corn and cattle, by using grain and high energy diets here at the uh, grain and grain byproducts, high energy diets here at the end of the feeding period uh, or end of their life cycle, we dramatically increase growth rate, feed utilization, and size of those cattle when they go to market. And so when you look at, at sustainability from the standpoint of amount of beef produced per cow exposed, and everybody hopefully understands what cow exposed means. <laughs> right. uh, we're, we're, we're the best in the world, and I think that's a tremendous story. I think you can also then go through the litany of concerns that are specific that some people have. Land use, water, energy use, and then methane, and by utilization of grain and grain byproducts in the feeding period, we improve all of those statistics by at least 50%, in some cases two or three times better in, in that sustainability picture. So I don't want to forget that we have a lot of land sure. that is used for grass production across the U.S. And, and frankly, that's the intended purpose of that land. That's what it should be used for. How else better can we utilize that than to graze cattle? But we also then want to put, sort of put the finishing touches on those cattle, which really dramatically improves our system. The last comment I would make is, is people think about methane and they think, oh, that's terrible news. I think there's some really exciting developments in that arena as well. Uh, we're learning, mostly from atmospheric scientists, not even beef cattle focused into researchers, that uh, this methane story is different than what's been told. It's, it's not, it's not, it doesn't last as long in the atmosphere. And uh, frankly, it's been produced forever by ruminants, maybe not cattle, but forever by ruminants. Yeah. And anything we do then to increase feed utilization Anything we do, like feeding corn, which will cut the methane production, uh, anything we do then that makes that methane that's expelled naturally by cattle go down will have dramatic impacts on what's concentrated in the atmosphere. So I think there's some exciting news coming in that, in that regard, and uh, the beef industry should, should get behind that.